Hi and welcome! My name is Julianne Cost, and in this tutorial we're going to talk a lot about the different ways that you can view images so that you can select the ones that you like and then rate them with maybe a flag rating or a star rating and then create a collection of all of your best images. So we'll begin here in the grid view and if you want to move from one image to the next you can simply use your arrow keys that moves you back and forth. If you want to zoom in on an image you can double click on it and what that does is it takes you from grid view to loop view. One of the nice things that Lightroom does is that it automatically then gives you the zoom tool so that you can click to zoom in on your image and it gives you the hand tool again automatically so that you can move around and check maybe focus in different areas of the image. Clicking once will bring you back to the loop view and then you can either double click or tap the G key or even click this grid view icon to return back to the grid view. Now when you're editing your images, I'm not sure if you're going to want to edit them at full screen or simply just move quickly through the grid view and pick the images that you want. I'm going to take the first case scenario that we actually want to see our images fairly large and then make our edits. Now when I get back from a full day shoot, I typically have a significant number of images. So what I like to do is actually move through my entire shoot just once in order to kind of review the day and see what it is that I have to choose from as well as delete the images that I absolutely do not want. So I'm going to double click to go into loop view and then I'm going to use another keyboard shortcut which is shift tab and what that does is it really kind of clears the rest of the interface away so that I can see my image a lot larger. If I want to tap the T key, the T key will hide the toolbar down there, but just you're going to have to remember that because you're going to have to type the T key again to bring it back. You can also tap the L key to dim back the interface and tap it again to go to lights out mode, in which case now the focus is just completely on your image tap the L key again to bring it the interface back if you want to. But let's go back into lights dim. Alright, now I'll just use the arrow keys in order to move from one image to the next. Now when I get to an image like this, I'm not sure I like it. I'm going to zoom in and sure enough it is not in focus. So let's go ahead and click again to zoom back out and now I want to tag this image. There are a variety of different ways you can do this, and this is just my way. You can customize this to your own way, but when I really don't like an image, when I want to delete an image, I will tap the X key. What that does is it flags it as a rejected file. It doesn't throw it away, it just flags it as a reject. Then I'll keep moving through my images, and when I reach another one that I really don't like, I can tap the X key again. I can tell that one's not in focus. We'll keep moving through. Those are interesting. Not so much that one, but maybe, so I'll keep it. Remember, this first pass that I'm doing, I'm really deleting just the ones that are either out of focus or that I just really, really don't like, the ones that I'm going to throw away. For you, it might not be as many. You might just be getting rid of the ones that are really blurry or the accidental, I can't believe I just photographed my shoe picture. All right, so I would move through the entire shoot this way. And when I'm finished, we can just tap the L key, turn the lights back on, and then Shift Tab brings back all that interface. And what's the last thing? The T key to bring back our tools. Okay, excellent. So let's just imagine that I have gone through my entire shoot. I don't want to take the time to really do it, so I'm going to stop here and then I'll go back to the grid view. Now the reason that I'm going back to the grid view is because it gives me the ability to filter my images. So what I would want to do right now is I'd want to see all of those images that I attributed with the reject flag. And here we can see the four images. And I really like the fact that Lightroom fades back any of the images that have gotten this reject tag that we applied by tapping the X key as dimmed. So at this point I actually go ahead and select them all. A simple command or control A will select them all and then tapping the delete key will bring up this warning. 
and it asks you, do you want to delete the four selected master photos from disk or just remove them from Lightroom? Well, if these are really terrible images and they're blurry and I never want to see them again, I will actually choose to delete them from the disk. If you wanted to, you could, you could leave them on the disk and just tell Lightroom to ignore them by clicking remove, but you know what? I'm done. I don't like these images. They're going into the trash. So I click delete from disk and Lightroom has now moved those files on my hard drive from the folder they were in into the trash can or the recycle bin. Hasn't emptied it, but they're there. Good. I never want to see them again. They weren't even in focus. All right, now we'll take off the filter by clicking None, and we're left with all of the images that we think are decent. We've had a nice review of them because we've moved through them once, and now it's time to further refine which images I like. So I can do that right here in Grid View. I could make my thumbnails larger if I wanted to by moving the thumbnail slider. I could use the Shift tab in order to see more at a time, and I could scroll down through them if I wanted to. Now, this is fine for a quick pick, but if you want to see the whole image full screen again, then I would suggest double clicking on it and using that arrow key. So when I come across an image that I really like, I will tap the one key. The one key is going to give me one star. Now, other folks, they don't need one, two, three, four, and five stars. They might just want to pick their favorite, in which case you can flag your images as a pick by tapping the P key. Now it's flagged as a picked. If all you're doing is trying to pick the best ones, this might be a good alternative for you. If you ever want to unflag your image, you can either click on the flag icon down here in the toolbar or type U for unflag. All right, I'm gonna use the one star to five star rating system, but I'm actually only gonna use one or two stars. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here when I'm going through my images. If I find an image that I really, really like, I'm simply going to give it one star. I'm not going to sit here and debate if it's a one star or a two star image or a two star or a three star image. I'm just going to rate the ones that I really, really like with one star. All right, we'll keep moving through here. All right, and I really, mm, I like that one, but look, I've got a lot of images that are similar. What I might do at this point is I might show my film strip down here so I get a little preview of what's to come because there are other ways to view multiple images. I'm going to go ahead and select these three in the film strip. You can see this one selected. I'll hold down the shift key and select this range and now I'm going to use the survey view. This icon right here or the N key. N is in Nancy. Now look, I can see all three of these very large and now I can really determine which one do I like the best and whichever one I like the best I would simply click on it and then tap that one key or you can see you can manually click to star the image here. Now let's select the next sequence. Look at this, I've got a lot of images that are very similar here. Well, right off the bat, I can start taking some of these away. I know that I don't like this one, so when I position my cursor on top of it, I get the X key and I can go ahead and reject it. I don't think I really like this view or this view very well either. But now I'm at a point where I really want to check focus and compare these six images a little bit closer. So I'm going to switch from survey view over to compare. Now you can see on the left I have a select image and a candidate. The goal here is to get my best image over here in the select window. So how do I do that? Well, I look at the image on the right and I say, is the image on the right better than the one on the left? No. So I'll move to the next image using the right arrow button. You can also use the right arrow key on your keyboard. Which image do I like better? Well, actually, I like the image on the right better, so I need to promote this image. And I can do that by using this icon right here, the Y or the candidate, move it over to X or the select. Excellent. Oh, now I like this one better, so let's do that again. You can also do this with a keyboard shortcut. The up key promotes them. And again, this one is better. Fantastic, so now I've gotten to the end. I've gone through all six images. I've been promoting the one I like the best to the left. That becomes my select, and I can either tap the one key or click on the one star icon right down here. 
Excellent. Let's go back to loop view. I can do that by clicking on the loop view icon or tapping the E key. I like to think of that as enlarge. Now we can continue to move through these using my arrow keys, but for the sake of time, let me go back to grid view and I'm going to use the minus key to zoom back out a little bit. I'm just going to scroll down and select quickly in the thumbnail view some of the images that I like and rate them with one star by just tapping on the one key. Oh, look at this. I've got a whole bunch of images. Look, these images here are a panorama. So if I don't want to see all of these images that are in a sequence, I can quickly select them all and then go under the photo menu, go to stacking and group them into a stack. Now they only appear as one, but you can see there's a little icon right here. And if I click on that, it will go ahead and expand the stack. And if I click again, it will collapse the stack. But that's a great way so that you don't have to scroll through multiple, multiple images that are pretty much the same in order to find the best one. All right, let's keep moving through, just tapping the one key here for these images that I like. All right, and one, oh, this is another great candidate for that compare mode, but I'm not going to waste our time with that. Okay, so let's say we've moved through the entire folder. Now I would go back and I would filter my images so that I'm only looking at those one stars. And then I would go through these again and I would just promote the ones that I really, really like to two stars. So you can see that it doesn't take me a ton of time to move through and do all of this. And it's just the way that I'm comfortable doing it. All right, I tapped the tab key there in order to bring back those panels. Now there is one other way of a kind of tagging an image and that's with your color labels. We can go ahead and view those if they're not showing by using the downward facing triangle here on the toolbar and selecting color label and then we could just click on one of these color labels or use the keyboard shortcut 6 through 9 to get the red through blue or click on the purple color label. It's just one more way to identify and label your images. So use whichever one is most comfortable for you. All right, now let's talk about collections. There are two different kinds of collections in Lightroom. You can create a regular collection or a smart collection. You can also create a collection set, but that's really just like a folder that you would put these two kinds of collections in. So we'll start with just a regular collection because I want to make a collection of all of my best images. So we'll just call this portfolio and then click create. Now I can move down here through my White Sands folder and when I find an image that I really like, I can simply drag that into the portfolio collection. And I can just keep moving down, I can select multiple images at a time if I want to and drag them in. Now that's excellent, but where I think that the collections really start shining is when you want to make collections of images that live in different folders. If I want to add something, let's say for example from my group of still life images, I can click on one to select it, scroll down, click on another image to select it, and drag those into my portfolio collection as well. So now that when we look at those we can see that I've got some images from White Sands, some images from my still life series. So I didn't have to move any of those files on the hard drive. They, they still live in their original location. I've just created kind of this virtual collection or virtual folder that's just pointing to the real images in their real folder. But it's so great because now I don't have to make duplicates and move them around and make copies and take up extra hard drive space. For example, I can go to Yellowstone. Let's pick some images from here, maybe this one and this one and drag it in as well. Again, you can see. I've got all these different images now from all these different folders in a single location. That's fantastic. Now let's take a look at smart collections. Smart collections, they work kind of like really powerful filters, only they're more permanent. So let's say I just want to make a collection, best of white sands. Now what I do is I put in all of my rules or criteria 
that Lightroom's going to use to create this collection. So let's say, for example, I say that the rating has to be greater than or equal to 2, and the folder itself has to contain the word white sands. Or I could use a keyword here. I can add as much information or as much search criteria as I want. I could say, for example, that it has to have been shot between a certain capture date, right? I could say is in the range or is in the last year or the last month. There is so much to choose from here, but we're going to keep it rather simple. Just the best of White Sands, all my two star images that are in the White Sands folder. I click on Create. It creates this best of White Sands. We click on it. There's eight images in there. Now, the great thing about this is, look what happens when I go back to White Sands. I'm going to scroll on down here till I find another image. Oh, I think this one's fantastic. I'll give it two stars. You can see the collection was automatically updated. If I select this image and tap two, now I'm up to ten images. When you click on that, you can see that those images have been added. So that's the primary difference between the regular collection and the smart collection. And of course, the opposite works as well. So for example, if I demote this, if I say, you know, I only want one star, and I click on the one star rating, it will automatically take it out of the smart collection. Also, if I go back to my regular portfolio collection and I decide that I don't want an image in it, if I select that image, tap the delete key, it will delete it from the collection, not from my hard drive. It's still in my White Sands folder, but it has been deleted from the collection. All right, one last thing, just because I use the keyboard shortcuts quite heavily, if you're not really into keyboard shortcuts, what you might want to do is down here in the tool area is show, for example, your flagging as well as your rating options. So that when you click on an image, you can then just come right down here and click one or two stars or flag that as a pick or as a reject. And one last thing I'll point out, right down here, you can see that my grid is, might look a little bit different from yours. That's because I've gone under the View menu here, and I've gone to View Options. And instead of showing just the compact cells, I've chosen to show expanded cells. I've turned off my tint grid cells with label colors turned on include color label so that you can see right here if this had a label it would show up and I am selecting these different options for my header with labels so that we can see all of that information like the file name, the format, the megapixels, and the crop dimensions. So that's all completely customizable in the library view options, which I got underneath the view menu. Excellent! That wraps up this tutorial on selecting rating and prioritizing your images. I'm Julianne Koss. Thanks for joining me.